still not recording. He's preparing to record. Now he's on. <laughs> uh, well, this is the Fedorite 3 Seek meeting. Uh, we have uh, the agenda. I'm going to put the agenda in the chat here uh, just to, to have it. I think everybody took some time to read today's agenda. Um, let's see. Uh, if you want to present yourself, or we'll proceed directly to topics as you want. Come on, don't talk everybody at the same time. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, and the topics we have to discuss today, we have the the uh, the final change proposal review that was in charge from with Justin. Uh, I would just like to add one thing here. Uh, we first of have a roll call. So have we introduced everyone, or we are not introduced yet? Uh, okay, I call to introduce yourself, and nobody talks. That's why I jump to <laughs> to the topics. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay for for I'm those sorry. that would... I can I can introduce myself. I was paying attention to another email, so uh, I talked to you guys at the issue for the package group. My name is Odilon. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I I'm using Fedora if I three for the last five or six years. I, I lost the count. And when I saw you guys doing the work to create a new spin, uh, I was interested on that. So I do work for Red Hat, but I do not work at Fedora. So that's there's that. <laughs> uh, welcome to the group. I, I love to see people interested. Uh, this is kind of my my little baby with the guys. We founded the I3C. Uh, because uh, basically because we want a, a way to have i3 without any other uh, uh, don't have any other desktop stuff just i3 directly and because um, constructed uh, the a, desk, uh, a GUI environment with the i3 window manager from scratch just from the basic installation is quite difficult. So we want to make this more approachable for, for end users. And that's why we are trying to make an ISO that come uh, directly with i3. Uh, my name is Sodor Lucena. I go as a stream boy in almost everywhere. When you can find me as a stream boy, I'm stream Linux. Uh, for example, in Twitch, I'm stream Linux, not stream boy. But um, well, I'm from Venezuela. I live in Chile. I work in several parts of the Fedora project. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what more to say. Uh, Dan, how about you go next? Yeah, hi, I'm I'm Dan. I'm the current package maintainer of i3, which I kind of inherited and then jumped on that because a, I don't do that much about it. Um, anyway, so that's uh, that's more or less my part of the story. And since uh, due to my day job, I've had a bit of um, bit of experience with OpenQA. I've started. I've currently started porting the OpenQA tests also support uh, to also run on the i3 ISO. So. So that we get, uh, we we don't have to do every single part manually every time. So, yeah, that's more or less what I've done so far. Come on, Nasir, that's your turn. <laughs> so my name is Nasser Hussain. I go by the name of Nasser HM in the Fedora community. Uh, that goes for my IRC metrics server. I'm NASA HM, including my fast ID. I am currently working on the kickstart part of things to uh, get into uh, to get uh, everything that we discuss into code and uh, like collaborate with the respin uh, to create a 
uh, we spin for the kickstart so uh, that's something that i'm currently working on along with some documentation and all that stuff so i think uh justin's about to join as well i think so he'll he'll be uh, uh he says that he'll be a few minutes late so i think uh, for the first uh, topic that's about change proposal final review it's uh, justin's uh, topic somehow so justin was the one who was working on it yes uh, just let's move to the next one and we will for justin to talk about the the proposal uh we have from but the next we topic throw in another topic yep Oh, and so that's concerning if we want to have some sort of uh, autos, um, some sort of desktop update notification service running or not. That's essentially, we have a notification daemon that's uh, done, not enabled by default, but it's there. At least I think that's the plan. Um, but we have, so the open QA tests of Fedora include also a um also tests for desktop update notifications and the question is do we want to have that as well which is more or less a matter of opinion so well, uh to be honest I, I we discussed this in in the irc uh my problem is not that we can show the message because i have those in in the installation i had but my problem is that those notifications usually are kind of a uh, little late. I don't know if if the update takes a package from package kit or from or from the DNF database or something like that. But normally when they show up that you have some updates I already updated like five minutes ago. So <laughs> I don't know why that happens, but it happens in every desktop I tried in Cinnamon and in LXQT and also happens with Dunst in, in i3. So I think, uh, to be honest, I don't like the idea to enable the, uh, when you have updates notification, but but for sure we ha should have notifications uh, system. So I think there are two different uh, topics there. One is they have notifications and then include the, the, uh, the update notifications. Yeah, so I actually don't care about update notifications. I haven't used them ever. I don't even have a notification daemon I don't even because have I think it's here. distracting and annoying. So uh, I'm from the same group as uh, Dan. I don't use that update manager as well. It's always TNF update on Fedora machines. So, so let's not include that. Uh, and we're done. Great. Yeah. We are doing great. And what about the current notification daemon? Like, uh, do we want to enable it by default uh, in the live and in uh, installation, or do we want to? Uh, I think we don't that? need it. We, we don't need it in the live. I think it's okay for the installation. Okay, so we want to enable it after installation. Is that what we are thinking about? Yes. I don't know if uh, Dan have their view point of view i mean normally we are going to use the the installation just to launch uh, anaconda uh, there is there will be just a few people that is going to use it uh, to test and they can enable it manually i think if, if they need it i mean if we are if we are putting it into the install we can uh, we might as well enable it on live that's that i'm not sure if that will make a huge difference uh, but, uh, then can you just uh, ensure one thing that if we the notification daemon is I, that if when sent a notification dunst just working or not because i could remember the last time that i have worked on this pen it was actually displaying the notification. So I'm not sure if Dunst needs to be enabled or it gets enabled when we install the package. And well, I don't think that it gets enabled by default. I think if you install it, it's just there. 
and you have to you have to actually start the thing. Once you I start it, it hooks somewhere via I don't know Dbus or something like it, that. It hooks. I think it. that you use notify not send to talk to Dbus. I don't know if Dunst was notify send. Let me check. Dunst re Dunst listens to notify send. That's what the current open QA test is doing. It's actually yes. just a start Dunst, do a notify send foo take a look if there's a notification called foo and if it disappears and that's it so it doesn't do anything more yes don't do you don't need to have a daemon running oh so it will like actually listen to the send notify in case we don't have the dunce daemon running is uh, that's what you're saying like notify listen actually sends that to a unix socket or something and then dunce actually oh, it goes via dbus Okay. Yes, it goes through Divas. Through Divas, sorry. Thanks for the info. So, is that a plus one from all of us for uh, Dunst? Yeah, I thought we so, agreed yeah, on Dunst. The, the thing is, uh, it's uh, it Dunst will listen to will listen to Dbus, but you have to launch it first. So, just installing is not enough. If you want to have notification, you have to launch it once, which would be actually my preferred uh, state of this, since otherwise people who don't like it have to somehow kill it, which uh, has been surprisingly are, difficult. It's, it's easier to opt out than to opt things, what I'm hearing. Hmm? It's easier to opt out that to opt in the auto no, it's actually easier to opt in than opt out it's the country <laughs> opt, opt it's the in. opposite <laughs> yeah opt in is just launch dunst once and opt out is find out how to disable the damn damn thing so okay so hi justin <laughs> hey, but uh late. don't worry that's okay uh well, I'm okay either way we choose. Uh, I do think it's necessary. If we are going to include it, it sh we should launch it uh, by default. I don't. It doesn't make any sense to have it there without being launched. Okay, that's correct. Okay, mm -hmm. so like we have agreed on enabling this dance for the installation as well as with the live. So. It should just enable itself or itself once, and then you can send uh, notify send to it through the bus. Okay, cool. So we uh, have you updated the MD pad, Edward, regarding it? Okay, that's great. Thanks, Edward. Yes, I put a new section called agreements, so we can just put what we discuss here. So I think. As we have agreed on the dense part of things, the first topic for today's meeting is about the change proposal review that Justin was actually working on. So Justin, would you like to provide some information regarding it? Yeah, let me share my screen really quick. Uh, OK, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So um, this came up in the mailing list earlier, and maybe you've had a chance to read through it already. Um, but this is just the current draft for the Fedora change proposal, what we're targeting probably for Fedora 34. Um, the only things I had wanted feedback on before, oh, yeah, and I added this section of uh, what Twitter had to say about our change proposal. Um, but the only things that I was looking for final feedback on, and I saw that uh, Defolos expanded on the how to test section with some notes there. Um, uh, was was that section getting a review on this section, how to test, and then the scope section, just getting a quick pass. Not on this stuff. These are things that, well, maybe some of these, but I don't think these. I'm just getting more a, a look over on the overall process of the scope, making sure that makes sense. That there's no surprises in there or that we're not missing anything huge. 
And then all we have to do is just rename this wiki page to the right namespace and change the category from change page incomplete to change page pending. And then Ben will just post it to the Devel announce list for us. It'll all happen automatically, as I'm told. <laughs> so that's all I have on, on that. Is um, it that. So really, it was just making sure that the scope makes sense and if we're happy with the test cases that we have written there. If we are, then we're good to submit. I have one Over. question. Uh, the relaying issue number is also done by Ben with, the, with his automagic wizardry. Yeah, so either someone in Fesco or Ben will open a, uh, a Fesco ticket tracker for the change. Um, so if I, include... I actually haven't gone through that. Pro <laughs> no, go ahead. Sorry. If we include like uh, Telegram uh, feedback, we are going to have that. Uh, 3,000 pages of people wanting the i 3 seek <laughs> to release the speed. <laughs> no kidding. We could even make it just a, a dedicated wiki page just for that. <laughs> cool. Um, well, if there's any any questions or things we want to talk about with the change proposal, we can now. But really, I thought it was just going to be getting a quick plus one or just reviewing it. Um, Leaving, leaving a comment in the ticket with your your plus one if it looks good or any feedback you have. And then we'll get this started. We'll make it official and we'll submit the change to to Fesco. So I, one, I never one find the thing. ticket number in Pagger for the proposal. I've been lazy enough to don't look for it. So if you can tell me what the number of the issue is. Uh, I'll drop a link in, in the chat. Here in Jitsi and in the IRC channel, actually, um, Dan, were you gonna were you gonna add something there? Uh, yeah, so I recall that a while ago, some of you guys faced some some GTK race condition thingy. Ah, uh, so in case that's I don't know if it's been already resolved or what, but. Uh, in case that was a relatively common thing, add that to the how to test that it's not uh, that that people do those steps that you use to reproduce it. So just to ensure that it doesn't occur again, since I never saw this the GDK race condition on OpenQA. Uh, I think that's something related to the uh, hardware side of things, and I think. Uh, Edward will be able to provide a better insight on this one because I could face something similar on uh, KVM team of the while creating a virtual machine and like I'm not sure if that's like solved yet but that's similar for S sugar on S six ten as well as I three so it's something that affects both of us. Yeah, I think it's not related to I three so is if it's going to be solved it isn't going to be solved by us. We can just document it, but it happened uh, specifically with my hardware because in in virtual machines that doesn't happen, and it happens when uh, when I was launching the the Anaconda com command from the command line. I wasn't using the minion in the live inst uh, command. I was using Anaconda's uh, dash dash uh, graphic. I think I don't remember if graphic or GUI instead of the of using the live inst command. And at the end, I finished my installation with the text uh, the text interface of Anaconda. It was kind of hard, but it was fun <laughs> for what it is worthy. And it proved that it's not uh, an issue related or I3 or even with the installation process. It's something specifically with the GUI is live inst. And I think nobody else uh, face that I don't know if anybody tried the ISO in in bare metal and not in virtual machine, but I don't know what further we can go from that. Maybe we can include a test case from some hardware and prevent people. I don't know. I think if we tell people just install it, then they should uh, then then they should hit the. Uh, um, then they should hit the bug if it's still a thing. And if not, then all is fine. 
since that was just essentially does the installer launch or doesn't doesn't it in launch so i was thinking about adding something in our documentation about it that if in case it could be in our frequently asked questions that if you face something like this you can follow the text live instead of the uh, live inst so we can what do you think about that also the matching with with, uh, with i do that when i raise that condition is still pretty much empty so i can reinstall anytime if we need to test uh, when we have a new fresh ISO, that is the next topic, <laughs> because the last ISO is kind of uh, old, and we have included still the mousepad change from uh, with gedit. Um, <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, but yes, I can try it again and and document it. I think. Uh, I don't know how we can treat that with a chain proposal. It's going to be like a blocker for some reason to launch the spin to face this. Because I think I remember well, in the chat that- Well, if you can't launch the installer, that's kind of a big blocker, so yeah. <laughs> But I think we, don't, we, we uh, I3 wasn't the only one that faced that. I think LXQT also. I don't remember who say it, say that in the chat. But I'm pretty sure somebody said it. was well, not about LXQT, but it was about SOS, Sugar on a Stick. So actually, Ben was the one who pointed out, pointed it out. Justin, you would like oh, to... Oh, the say? SOS. Yeah. I was just wondering, did, it, did we think about posting to the spins mailing list? I know it's not very active, but there's a good chance that if someone else has run into this before, they'd be on that mailing list. I'm sure that's a great idea. I can dig up a link on the mailing list if someone wants to take an action to just drop a drop a note there and ask about the race condition issue. Yeah, please. I can, I, I can try. I can drop the the mail uh, later. If nobody take uh, on that, I can take it. For the uh, current evaluation of the ISO, that's actually some of my part that what we are currently having. So let's just quickly go through what we can, what we last uh, added in the in the kickstart file for the ISO. So as far as I could remember, the packages were working fine in the last respin build, but uh, there was an issue that. Uh, that caused the wallpaper to not working fine in the live side of things. So on the live, I've actually added the fay. Uh, we have added a fay package to set wallpaper. There would be a more minimal package that we can search for and use that instead. Or uh, like, uh, if you any of you have any recommendations, like something really really light that could that's just used to set the wallpaper. Uh, like we can use that and that's what I fixed in the past days. So it's the current year status that we have live and installation where you can find the packages we have installed by being tested, uh, automated, tested by uh, the Dan DevLoss and that's what we have worked on the last ISO build. I don't know if there's anything lighter than fear. But say honestly. so light. Uh, if fear is the lightest, like I was thinking about something, the lightest thing available, just, just out of curiosity and wonder that if we could go something more lighter than fear. But I, if we have got fear, we are good with fear because it's working fine. If there's something more Maybe. lighter than Maybe. Maybe we can start for like the initial launch of the spin to use fast since that's what we have and we know it works. And while it's still maybe not the most, it does a lot of things. It might not be the best tool for the job. It's the most convenient one to us now. It would be cool, I think, to probably make a ticket to 
actually look at how the wallpaper gets read on the system and maybe see if there's a way that we can do that in an i3 native way. But because we have the package but, for Fedora with the wallpapers, but that would be a a, a nice to have. But I uh, feature I. I I have a question. Just for the live uh, session, we really need Light DM to be launched. I mean, we can just start X in the i3 with a live inst uh, command running. I don't know. Just wondering. I'm pretty sure we need it to when after uh, you install. I3 kind of expects nowadays to be launched by a display by an actual display manager. Oh, okay. so you can do it via start X, mm. but if stuff breaks, you are on your own. So I've run into issues with <clears throat> Nvidia graphics cards and start X, and um, upstream told me essentially, please use Light DM, and with Light DM it works. So they. This, they don't, uh, they, uh, it, it's essentially start access effectively broken. So mm. no, that's okay. I was just wondering, just trying to, to look another, maybe another solution, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that's good it context. Works, it works most of the time. It just breaks sometimes. Yeah. We need to avoid that, that sometimes, especially because uh, we are going to have a lot of people that want to have minimal resources with their NVIDIA card to power of maybe data gaming. That was actually what most people talk to me about the i3. They want something really, really minimal, more minimal than <laughs> than anything to leave every other resources. resources. So nice. And to be honest, the Steam Package run really smooth with i3 in the background. I was playing Counter Strike Global Offensive and it was awesome. <laughs> I was using it, the XVK with i3 and there's no brackish trap, so it was amazing. So, Nessir, so. Uh, What's the final situation that the current situation from that? So, so we can talk with the with the resping people with uh, Thor the gentleman to to produce a new ISO uh, uh, right now, or we have to see something uh, to fix. I think. Oh, so, I would like to add just one thing there for collaborating with the respins. I think it would be better to wait a day or two because. I would have to rewrite the uh, uh, the kickstart actually removing some of the XFC stuff that we have there, along with splitting our changes into uh, specific different into different files because you would actually have to include the Fedora repos file because that's where all the Fedora level changes happen. So in case a system change lands, so we wouldn't be able to modify the. Uh, flattened kickstart but if it would be modified so if it would be modularized then it would be much easier to do that so it i'll most probably get it done in a day or two so if someone could assign an action item to me to split the kickstart and and uh, collaborate with the respins to build it so it'll most probably take a day or two for me uh, great. Do you want to put that as know. a follow-up for the next ir or i3 sig meeting Yep. Yeah, that will be a good idea. So I could demonstrate the new kickstart and show how clean it is. Then how clean it is, how messy it is now. Super. So we'll go and why don't we set that as the follow up for the next I3 SIG meeting? I'll put that into the IRC sure. chat. You, you are managing the, I3, the IRC meeting with Southbot? Just more like collecting the links and the the actions. Yeah, sure. From because the, I wasn't from paying attention to IRC. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just like dropping like just notes and stuff in there, not not anything like chat. No, we are uh, because uh, Nasir and I are we are working on on the happen D, so we are putting everything in there. <laughs> we forgot totally about the IRC. <laughs> oh. Got it. 
I wasn't looking at now I see it. <laughs> so I think let's move with the next topic. What do we have as our next? The next topic is the um, is where Park talk about it and in several uh, uh, points, but we are talking about the QA. So in this case, uh, uh, our guy is Dan, so he can help us to to understand a little bit more of the Q Open QA test cases. What we need from that part, what we have to do, how we can help you to move this forward? Um, in a nutshell, unless you want to spend a few weeks reading up stuff, you can't. It's not intended as an insult, but the open QA is not easy to grok. So it essentially comes down to um, I'll eventually submit uh, submit my changes to the test repo, and uh, that's probably have uh, and uh, figure it out with Adam uh, Williamson how how they're going to like it and tweak it until until they're happy with with everything so uh, um, i mean the the one thing which is relatively easily possible is uh, that everyone thinks about possible stuff that they want to test so for instance in i in i3 should um i don't know i want uh tiling tabbing etc pp to work and uh, I don't know, in mouse pad syntax highlighting should work or comparable stuff like that. But besides that, I'm afraid there's not too much that can be easily done. Well, basically, I think uh, I, I was trying to look at other tests uh, from other uh, desktop environments, but they have too many stuff that they want to be able to do that we don't want to be <laughs> to have. For example, they have test cases to LibreOffice to open a document, but we are not including LibreOffice because that uh, we are going to let people to choose if they want LibreOffice or or KDE Office or the Genome Office suite that I never remember how it's called, or if they are going to install each application uh, separately that's why I have problems. I think I was uh, the last thing I was uh, thinking about was to include COPS or some print management. But I think also for I'm kind of torn because for power users it's okay to do some, to don't have it because it's for it's super easy just to install and configure. But for final users maybe they just want to plug the printer and just uh, launch system config printer and roll with it <laughs> for that uh, ah, so i have a point about for people trying to learn open qa so then sir mark Dacolos actually has some really awesome twitch live streams where he have demonstrated the open qa 101 and how can anyone get started with pearl and open qa and some basic testing stuff. So go check that out and learn uh, open QA in a be aware that's open source specific. Open QA is a lot about convention. And Adam tweaked open QA uh, a lot. Quite a lot. So it's uh, his instance is quite different. But uh, the, the basics are the same. But adding a completely new, uh, a completely new test suit is a little bit involved. But I mean, I can. Um, um, I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm not discouraging anyone from getting started. I'm just saying it's going. It takes a while to get into the system. Like Open QA is something in itself. That's great. Uh, Justin, you would like to add something? Yeah, I was just going to come back to Eduard's question about the printer. Um, I I think there's a, a way that we can, I think there's a compromise there, because I think what we can do is ship something that's like a simple 
printer configuration utility, just like you'd have with GNOME settings or KDE's settings, if you have that desktop where you can go and manage your printers. If we could find like whatever the XFCE equivalent is or some other desktop environment that's a little more modular, we could put that in there and leave it to the user to go beyond that. Um, because like my experiences with printer drivers, um, first it's a gamble of whether they have them for Linux or not, and if they do, then you're usually running like all kinds of crazy shell scripts as root and downloading from there. They're, you know, printer drivers are a mess. So I think just leaving it simple with just like, here's a tool to help you do that stuff. That's okay. But we don't have to go to the extent of trying to make i3 the perfect printing environment for Linux. I, people are still trying to do that after well, decades. Uh, <laughs> my, my printer is using a 10 years old driver that is never updated from the factory that I have to install with uh, the i uh, the the 32 bits package because this it doesn't have a 64 bits package so I understand what you're saying. Yep. <laughs> so I think that's that's my feel on, on on the printing side of it. We can just do a like simple app. Yeah, Nasir, go ahead. Uh, so uh, as we have like have some. I think there would be some research needed on the printer side of things. Other than that, uh, I think uh, the, the third topic was that uh, we would like most probably thinking about organizing a test day or test week where people can test our ISO and like DevOps is automating all these testing stuff. So I think it would be great to country to start documenting all of them because uh, one thing that I've seen with test days like I've I started with participating in some of them with Fedora. So I did find that those tests were actually very well documented that uh, you can follow them step by step and perform the operation and test if the required uh, expected outcome is coming or not. So that's what I'm thinking about, that if we should start documenting those test cases in our docs to be used in the test day or test week. So what's everyone's thought on that? Because like collaborating with open Q with the QA team would most likely need that. I think we agreed some time ago that we are going to include uh, a volume icon and network manager applet uh, from the installation starting. It's okay or I'm okay or I'm hallucinating. I thought we wanted to collaborate with QA for test days. Yes, because uh, I have we have this document that probably a few of us uh, read, uh, read at the beginning. It was uh, from some guys from Red Hat that was thinking about the an uh, i3 spin or or CD dialed with i3. And one of the biggest comments I always, uh, all, uh, all the time I read this, the, the comment of the GUI network manager is uh, one that hits me because configuring the network from the CLI is not straightforward. If you don't know the NM CLI, it's painful, to be really, really honest. We get used to because we did it a lot of time probably, but, but it's not easy. And nobody is going to be familiar with in in the user land. From the power user land, it's different because we tend to use, do everything for, with a common line. But I think we need to. Is for me, it's like I we need it. We really need a network manager graphically, and in the in the first installation when it's rec uh, recently installed, and network manager applet do the work pretty smoothly. Um, and from the volume, there is no easy way to use Pulse Audio either. So I think the volume icon is also a plus one for me. It's what I use in here, so I have nothing, nothing against. <laughs> and Pavo Control as well. Uh, I could not live with yeah. a lot of headphones without control so uh, 
So for me, I have like copied Justin's uh, i3 config. So that's how I actually started with i3. So I have got that uh, vo volume stuff covered. So if we have any package, I'm not sure what package do we use for that. So is that Pavo control, Justin, that we are that we both are currently using in your config? Pavo control. So I can just do a quick. Um screen share here it's just the pulse audio volume control application so you'll see here you have all of my sound these are all my sound to put some of these are going to be the audio and stuff from the call but if i was had spotify here i'd see spotify volume oops but let's not raise the volume so is that thing that opens right. when you say uh, open mix uh, open mixer see yes Okay, right. So we it's have... how you can control your input and output devices and do different audio profile configurations. So I was actually using the command line all this time without knowing that we have some GUI. <laughs> so isn't something really changing for me. So I would still, it's a plus one for me. Like uh, we shouldn't. We can't expect the end user to be using the command line as I am doing. So I think it will be a plus one to figure mind. out. Yep. So we agreed to include these three things, network manager applet, uh, uh, volume icon, and Pavum control. And uh, then we, we, there is a QA test cases for that. Or we should include it, or how? For what? For for sound? For sound and network management. Uh, there might be one for network. There's, I think there's none for sound. Let me take a look. Well, then taking a look at that, I would like to ask, what I can uh, be like thinking about adding in this thing, like. Uh, does anyone have any demonstration for the volume icon? Because with Network Manager, it's straightforward, but I'm not sure about volume. So do we have that package or what package are, is it for that? So please, like, can someone tell me about the package or so? Not sure if I understood the question about the it package names. Uh, like the uh, package would we be using for the volume icon? That's the question. The package is called volume icon. <laughs> like that. That's just, the name. <laughs> just like I put it in the in the Hagen D. It's volume icon. That doesn't have any other name. And it's just a little icon that have uh, uh, volume control, and you can just uh, oh, he goes. But that you can just ro roll your mouse wheel over it and put more or less volume, and Actually, from there you can launch the the path of control. It's just a little icon from with the volume thing. Okay, if it's volume control, then I think we have added that in. Uh, so, okay, so uh, Justin created and agreed. So, yep, thanks, Justin. And uh, I'm gonna add that. So, there's no, there's definitely no sound tests on OpenQA that should be possible to include. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I mean, I know OpenQA can test sound, but I've never done that. But it would be interesting to take a look at that. But I wouldn't. Uh, I would maybe defer that for later. And networking is essentially the same thing. Although that might be even a bit harder to pull off. But checking whether the something like network manager applet or stuff like that shows up, that's relatively easy to do. So we can do that. I have a question. Uh... Sork uh, takes care of the hotkeys from volume control and brightness and everything else, right? From the keyboard, when you put the, you have a button, a media button to uh, volume up, volume down, mute. 
I don't know because uh, uh, I was reading again these ideas dot and and it says that they want something to take care about it, and I think that's managed directly by by Thor by X11 by the X server. You don't have to configure anything. I never configured anything to have volume up and down with the with the hotkeys. I think I always configured them manually, so I've never heard of this package. Maybe we should include it then, since that sounds pretty convenient. But I think it's part of the X suite. Because it's working right now with the current uh, i3. I just, uh, when, you, when I launch my i3 configs, I just call the key with their with their X name is like X free phone thing. That's true. I never look at how they are working, working. So maybe something with the firmware from the keyboard. I don't know. So what I'm also the hotkey for for play is called X F eighty six audio play FX eighty six audio pause FX eighty six audio next. But I never configured that names from the key hotkeys. They are configured by the X server, I think, at least. <laughs> so I think those keys are actually configured by default. And in the i3 config file, you actually bind those keys to PAX TL. Is that what you are referring to, Edward? Yes. So I'm using the same thing. And uh, Justin is most probably using the same thing as well. So. I... No, that's okay. I was just uh, taking it because it's uh, in the in my list of, of things that people ask. It was about this uh, hotkeys uh, management from from volume and stuff like related I... to what it, I, I think was in my times it was called multimedia keyboards when mm -hmm. they have the play and pause and volume up and volume down. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I think like uh, that actually happens by default, so we wouldn't have to work on that. I think we have another package that I actually created an issue for, a ticket fund, that's uh, Dex Auto Start. So I think I'll give just a quick introduction what the package is all about. It's about uh, with the different desktop environments like uh, GNOME, KDE, or XFCE, LXQT. What it does is it actually reads the uh, .desktop files in a specific directory, and when you start, when you install a program like Skype or Zoom or something like that, it actually creates a dot .desktop file in some directory where your desktop environment reads it from. And whenever you start your laptop, it actually uh, starts those programs in the background. So. Uh, it actually is helpful for programs like Sp Skype and stuff, but we don't have that in i3. So there's a package called Dex Auto Start. What it does is that it actually reads through the uh, the directory and finds the .desktop files and starts them on once the session started. So uh, I think uh, would that be a plus one from all of us, or does anyone have any? I'm still zero on that because I don't use those uh, desktop files and would neither need for a, for a program to start some application for me, which I have installed previously. It would be a zero from my side, but what about you guys? I don't know. I, my my A3 starts things for me when I launch the session with auto start or as X start. I think really it'll be a thing that's interesting for people who are migrating over rather than people who are new installs. So if you're coming from another desktop environment and you're, uh, if you're installing the i3 core group, really, this would be more of that use case than it would be for the spin. Um, that should make it pretty easy to adapt. So at least all your applications you've already expected to launch it open will still do that in i3. Uh, but we will need to 
make a documentation for that, right? Because people will mm. not expect to launch or how it will all to start. So we will need to yeah, teach people how to use. That actually one thing I wanted to just bring up before the end of the meeting, we were talking about some of the test case. This kind of reminded me of that. Um, was we're talking about test cases and maybe getting an idea of what software other folks in the community might want to put in there. I was going to suggest what if I um, worked with the poll with the CPE team to do a Lyme survey poll about some of our like, how would you want to test the, you know, what do you, what's your use case for Fedora i3? Like, what are the things you do in i3? And maybe we can try to design test cases around some of that feedback. But um, I'd be willing to do some of. I've been meaning to look at Lime Survey for a while already, so it would be give me an excuse to finally go ahead and try that out. If that would be helpful to get some feedback. Yeah, sounds good. It yeah. sounds good to me too. Also, I think uh, there was a guy. I, my mind is way too easy. I have a fish memory. <laughs> there was a guy that offers to help us to customize the look and feel but because i think uh, i was looking at the beginning of this journey i was looking for manjaro i3 community edition and with regular linux that came directly with i3 and i was looking at instant os that is an inst uh, another window manager but come pre-installed in the with that uh, linux flavor and everyone tends to put no. Um, something that helps people to know the the most uses hotkeys, and I don't know if that uh, maybe was a thing for us. Maybe I don't know. I don't want to include it in a wallpaper or put a conky over our desktop because I don't like conky at all. But at least we can link a document or put a. A Firefox bookmark with the i3 documentation for people to look at the first key when they are going, they are just starting with i3 to help. I don't know what do you think about that. Yeah, I think we could probably publish that in our our docs, like kind of like a getting started kind of uh, section of our docs for people who are just starting to use the spin or the package group. Yeah, because normally I, another thing that people use a lot is to use i3 gaps, but oh, to be honest, I don't like it and I don't use it. <laughs> also, it's a patch that is not official anywhere, so it's supposed right. to look better, but well. I think as we are running out of time, we have another uh, uh, topic that's about package groups, and we have oh, the Oh, Odihau, am I pronouncing your name right? Uh, Odihau, okay. The way that it wants. <laughs> so, uh, like, uh, uh, so if uh, Odihau, if you have any questions regarding where to get started with, or we have my, any. My main, my main question is what packages are we looking for to include at the first group, i3 core? Like, are we going to include i3? Uh, let me get the from the kickstart. We have i3, i3 lock, i3 status, danced, fay, and bright light. Only these five packages for the i3 core, or I will like, we will include something. Because I will start to work on the the proposal for the guys to include that on Fedora 34, science it or target it, release. I think Nasir, this is the pull request you'll be making by the next meeting, right? With those changes that we've been kind of working on in discussion, or do I have it misunderstood? Uh, so for the next PR that I am actually targeting is about breaking and splitting the kickstart along with the uh, uh, cleaning most of the IXFT packages and just keeping the i3 ones. So that will be a good starting point for ODL to 
uh, go through them and like we can uh, in our next meeting we can discuss which we want in the IP4 and which ones in IP extended. Okay, works for me. Also, I don't know how to build or create package groups. If I think that part of your experience or area you want to contribute with us. Yes, uh, there's a, a, a doc that I link it on the issue. It's let me paste on the on the chat. We do have a repository that is called Fedora Comps. And each release will have the XML file with the packages. It's just a, a group of packages that we call. So KDE has oh, one. Comps. Gnome has other. So it's really simple from what I could get. We just need to introduce ourselves to the guys at the Devel and explain why we need this, at least from what I could get. Super. Yeah, now that you link that, it I remember that that's, that's how those come together in the distribution. So I think that would definitely be the right direction to go. As soon as we have, basically, I think we just need to get the package list in the Kickstart, and then we can just use that as a reference point for when we go to the devel list and make a even make a pull request to the fedora 34 comps list so i guess then maybe maybe then as part of that pull request for the kickstart just to make sure that we keep progress moving can do you think that we can get the full list of the packages to date that we've talked about adding um in discussion um in the past meetings to the 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 kickstart file in the Pagro repo? Uh, sure. Uh, and it'll most probably take a day or two because I'll be breaking that splitted kickstart into pieces and using include statements and build it on BeerTFS. Awesome. Cool. So and I, think I think we have we a plan for open floor for, Go ahead. for one minute. And for open floor, I have the the calendar. We have a problem with the calendar. It shows like three meetings in one day oh. <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> so I don't know why this is happening. And actually, I don't know what calendar is the correct one to see what ones, uh, which one we could delete and leave only one, or even who have admin privilege in the six calendar to to remove this. So we should ask. We need the polls help. He was the creator of all three of the events. So he's the only one that can create them unless we ping. Maybe it's Kevin Nerik. Someone from I can't, I can't. should take care of that. No, in, in that case, it's either it's either a poll or we have to go to the, the highest level of admin in FedOcal, which is probably going to be like five people. <laughs> I get one of them to clean it up. So it'll be easier if we can get the poll to just go in there and fix it for us. Um, yeah, sure that we have that's it. good to put the, an action just to remind me that I need to talk to people to do this. And uh, let's close because sure. I want to eat. It's lunch time here. <laughs> sure, I'll put an action on the IRC for the follow-up on that and we can wrap there. Sure. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.